Whenever I'm working on a sound mix for a short film, I always run into the same time-consuming problem. Fiddling around with reverb settings for way too long, trying to match and embed the natural ambience of the scene to my Foley, sound effects and ADR. Well, what if I told you that you could actually capture genuine reverb of a room on location with your standard sound kit in less than 30 seconds, and it's gonna be completely controllable in your audio workstation? Sounds like magic, doesn't it? Well, let me show you how you can achieve this so you can become the best sound guy or girl around and start making the best sounding films you've ever made. Welcome to the Film Look. If you're new here, my name's Richard, this is Robert, and on this channel we make films and then share everything we've learned so you can make your films bigger, better, and make something which you're proud to share with the world. Today I want to talk about a technique called an impulse response. For those wondering why you should be adding reverb to your post-production sound, let me just show you two clips right here. All of the audio in this following scene features our footstep sound pack, which you can actually buy following the link below. One clip is totally dry, meaning it has no effects added, and the other has reverb added to the footsteps. You decide which one is more realistic. So as you can hear, the clip with the reverb added gives you the impression that it's inside the room. The footsteps feel more like they're actually in the scene and not just plonked on top. Now, it did take me about 40 minutes of fiddling around with reverb settings in Adobe Audition to get this right, and I still don't think it's perfect. So we asked our friend Mark Edward Lewis from cinemasound.com if he knew of a solution, and there's no better person than the guy featured on the welcome screen of Adobe Audition. How do we do it, Mark? Well, you know how it is. Everybody hates everything to do with audio on set, especially having to be in silence for 30 seconds doing room tone. But since you have to do room tone in every room you're in anyway, and it's fun to freak people out even further and become a God in post-production, next time you're doing room tone, run up to where the actors are or wherever the microphones are pointed and clap three or four times at the end of every clap, making sure that the echo and the reverb in the room has fully subsided before clapping again. Using a deep clap, not a bright clap, to do these claps. And what you're doing is basically creating a poor man's impulse response recording that's basically giving you the nature of the room in which you've been shooting. You'll be able to use that in post-production to be able to recreate that room and be able to easily balance your natural or onset sound with your ADR or looping. So in order to test this out, we found a room with a stupid amount of unusable reverb we recorded a dialogue clip. The stairwell at the back of our studio, it's got a ton of reverb. Some would suggest this dialogue needs replacing. We recorded a few beefy clap sounds in the room, also known as an impulse response, and re-recorded the dialogue in a low noise, low reverb environment, mimicking the original as close as possible. This is also known as ADR, or Automated Dialogue Replacement. The stairwell at the back of the studio, it's got a ton of reverb. Some would suggest this dialogue needs replacing. So with a clean dialogue replacement and an impulse response recorded in the location, we can now send that over to Mark to work his magic. All right, we're here at Adobe Audition and we have the onset sound along with a really well recorded ADR track. Let's take a listen to the onset sound itself. The stairwell at the back of our studio, it's got a ton of reverb. Some would suggest this dialogue needs replacing. I, I would be one of those people to suggest. Now here is the ADR, very happily recorded. The stairwell at the back of our studio, it's got a ton of reverb. Some would suggest this dialogue needs replacing. And while this is really well synced, it obviously sounds and feels like ADR. And if we were trying to match this with other Nat sound, we would have a real problem because it's so beautifully recorded, but it's also way too clean. Now, the first thing I do is add a little bit of contouring with an EQ to the ADR. Uh, because even if you use the same microphone in ADR as you did on set, which you should, there's going to be a little bit of a difference in sound between them. So we want to kind of balance that as best we can. Here is what it sounds like without the EQ. The stairwell at the back of our studio. And with. The stairwell at the back of our studio. It's subtle, but it does help us get closer to what we have on set. The stairwell at the back of our... Which will help the reverb that we choose sound even better. All right, we have our impulse response 
clap file here, if you will, and it opens in the spectral editor once we double click and we can bring down the waveform view, which is what we want to look at. And we're going to be making individual files out of each one of these claps. Now, ideally, these claps would have been not distorted, but Adobe Audition is good enough for us to be able to use them anyway. So the first thing we want to do is be able to zoom in on the attack of the first clap as closely as we can so that we don't have any space before the clap. Then we'll take the zoom selection tool and go almost all the way to the next attack and shift click not quite to the beginning of the next attack, but just before. Now we've selected everything from the beginning of the attack all the way through whatever echo or reverb could be there. And then we select a marker. Now that it's in a selection that's long like this, you'll notice that the marker has a duration as well, a beginning and an end. And we'll be able to save these markers with the file for later use. Once we have the first one, we do the next in kind until we've gotten all of the impulse response files the way we want them, nice and edited. Notice that as we create more markers, they show up in the markers window along with their duration. Once we have markers on all the selected claps, we can store them as individual files. Simply double click on the marker icon, control click and save selection as, and you're good to go. Once you've stored all the impulse responses as individual files, you can go back to the edit window, select the ADR channel and instantiate the convolution reverb from Adobe Audition. So let's just go over what these settings do. They don't change your impulse response, but the convolution reverb does alter how it sounds based on these incredible parameters. So mix basically takes you from all dry, the stairwell at the bottom, just the way you had it originally, to all wet. The stairwell at a hundred percent underwater. The room size determines mathematically how big that room is, even though it's using your fixed impulse response. The stairwell at the studio it's got a tone of so it suggests this dialogue. A nice setting tends to be around 30%. Low and high frequency damping determine how much cutoff or time is allowed for low frequencies or high frequencies. Check out the difference. The studio it's got a tone of re versus high frequency. The and you can see how with high damping on full, only those low frequencies are let to allowed to ring long and vice versa with low frequencies. We pretty much want to have pre-delay off. We want to have the width at 100% so that it's not getting more stereo than otherwise it would. The gain we want to have basically at zero so that we can change that with faders in the mix. The most important aspect of this plugin, however, is the load button. And this is where you're going to be loading your custom impulse responses into the plugin, not using the ones that come with Adobe Audition. To load an impulse response, simply click on the load button and navigate to the folder that has all of your impulse responses and simply click open. You'll notice that they will show up here as the file name that you saved them. If you want to save your impulse response and your convolution reverb settings, it's easy to do. Simply go to the save effect preset tab and create your own preset. Now that we have our impulse response loaded and adjusted a few settings, let's see how we did. The stairwell at the back of our studio, it's got a ton of reverb. And the original. The stairwell at the back of our studio, it's got a ton of Pretty good. The difference being that we have control now and we can turn this up or down as we wish. The stairwell at the back of our studio, it's got a ton of reverb. Someone suggests- And we can do anything we want with this sound, but you're already noticing, hey, this is mono. And the reason for that is, although the dialogue is mono, we really want to have the reverb stereo or better if we can. The problem, well, we recorded an impulse response in mono because the dialogue or lavalier or shotgun microphones are in mono. How do we make this stereo? A little extra work, but well worth it. Back we go to the waveform edit view and you can see our markers are still there. If we save, these markers will get stored to the file. Again, to be used anywhere in any program, those markers will show up. Dope. Now you can't use the Adobe Stereo Expander because this is mono and nothing will happen. So we have to do a little cheat that's also mono compatible. All we really need to do is delay the right channel by about seven milliseconds. It's mono compatible because it's reverb. And although your left channel is going to sound like it's louder because your brain's hearing it first, we'll be able to fix that in a moment. Take a listen to how this sounds in mono versus with a seven millisecond delay. 
all of a sudden, massive new stereo. We select all and apply, and the right channel is delayed, and we can go back to the markers once again and save as we did before. Although we can use the convolution for reverb, it doesn't give us the stereo controls that we'll need to be able to balance our newly delayed left and right channels. So we want to use the surround convolution reverb, even though we're going to be using it in stereo. We simply take the convolution reverb and go to reverb and reselect it. And now it comes up, this beautiful, beautiful thing. You'll notice it has almost all the same controls except for a couple of different ones. We still load the impulse response the same way by clicking on the load button and navigating to our now delayed impulse responses and the one that we know we want. So let's take a listen. The stairwell at the back of our studio, it's got a- It sounds good, but because we delayed that channel, it sounds a little bit right heavy or left heavy, depending on where your headphones are. So we're gonna use the left and right balance to be able to put it back into equality. The stairwell at the back of our studio, it's got a ton of reverb. Someone said- And remember that you wanna use your ears, not the levels, to be able to balance this, because the levels will have them exactly the same, but your brain will interpret it opposite. Generally, you're gonna be at about a 30% setting. One of the great things about having multiple impulse responses and multiple claps at your disposal is that you can experiment with different claps and see how they affect the sound. The stairwell at the back of our studio, the stairwell at the back of our studio. The stairwell at the back of our studio. So you can see that individual claps have a very different effect on how the reverb works. But if you do three or maybe four claps, you'll definitely be able to find one that will recreate that onset natural sound for you to be a god in ADR. So next time you're on set and you've just captured room tone, why not get some impulse responses as well? It's gonna save us all so much time on set and in the mix. And if you want even more in-depth knowledge, head over to cinemasound.com where Mark Edward Lewis is going to make you the best sound recordist, sound designer, sound mixer in the world. Links in the description.